Hello, my name is Patrick LeBlanc, and I'm a technical solutions professional for U.S. education at Microsoft. My primary focus is SQL Server and Business Intelligence. In this series of videos, I will be explaining and demonstrating how to develop and deploy SQL Server Reporting Services reports. However, before we get started, there's a couple of things that you need to have installed or have in place before you can actually follow along with these demonstrations. The first thing is a SQL Server database engine. The second thing is SQL Server Management Studio. And finally, you'll need SQL Server data tools. I'm going to assume that these things are installed and in place and that you have proper permissions. If not, you can go to Microsoft.com slash SQL Server to download an evaluation copy of SQL Server. In addition to those three items, you'll need to restore the Contoso Schools Data Warehouse database. Within the context of this blog, I've provided a link where you can download the database. Once the database is downloaded, you'll need to restore it using Management Studio. In this video, I'll explain and provide the steps that are needed to perform that restore. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is open Management Studio. If you're running Windows 8, you just need to go to the Start screen and select SQL Server Management Studio. If you're running one of the previous versions of Windows, you'll need to go to Start, All Programs, Microsoft SQL Server, and select SQL Server Management Studio. Once Management Studio is open, you'll need to connect to an instance of SQL Server. In the server type drop down box, ensure the database engine is selected. In the server name drop down box, enter your server name. And then, depending on what type of authentication permissions you have, you will select Windows or SQL Server. If you select SQL Server, you must enter a username and password. I'm going to go ahead and select Windows since I'm authenticating using Windows. Then click the button Label Connect. Once you've connected to your SQL Server, locate the Object Explorer. If the Object Explorer isn't open, you can press the F8 button to open it, or you can go to View and select Object Explorer. Once Object Explorer is open, expand the instance of SQL Server that you've connected to, right-click on the folder labeled Databases, and select Restore Database. Once you've selected the Restore Database item from the context menu, the Restore Database window will appear. In the Select the Page pane on the Restore Database window, ensure that General is selected, on the general screen, select the radio button labeled devices, click the ellipsis located to the right of the device's text box, the select backup devices window will appear, ensure that file is selected in the backup media type drop down box, click the button labeled add, navigate to the location where you save the Contoso Schools data warehouse backup, select it and click OK, click OK again on the select backup devices window, everything should populate for you. In the Select the Page pane, select Files. This is where things could get a little tricky. Expand out the Restore As column. What you may notice is that the path specified in the Restore As column is different from the original file name column. What you need to do is verify that this path on both rows exists on your machine. Once you verify that, Click OK and the restore will begin. When you click OK, you'll see the restoring percentage start to increase. Once the restore is complete, Management Studio will prompt you with the information that the restore is done successfully. Click OK. Back in the Object Explorer, expand databases, and you'll see your newly restored database. You could also perform the exact same steps with Transact SQL. To do so, click the New Query button located in the menu bar a new query window would open will open copy the code from the section restoring a database using T-SQL and paste it into the query window and just click execute once you click execute the restore will begin if you've already restored the database using the GUI you'll receive an error so choose the method that you prefer the most and restore it that way if you have any questions or concerns pertaining to the contents of this video, please feel free to email me at pleblanc at sequellunch.com. Thanks for watching.